Roku released some details today on the upcoming Roku OS 11. Now they say this is going to come out in the next few weeks. What that means, we don't exactly know. And it takes a few small steps. And it does take a big swing or two, but mostly it proves something that we already knew all along. And I do have the details for you, so let's dive in. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to like and subscribe and join me every Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern for the live streams that we do right here on this channel. They're a lot of fun. I hope you'll join us. All right, Roku OS 11. Let's get into the details. There are eight major updates. I'm sure there's lots of little things going on in the background, but eight things that are noteworthy. And in this video, I'm going to rank them in order from the most to the least exciting, at least to me. Okay, so let's start with number one, and that is the what to watch menu option. Now for this one, let me introduce you to past me. What I'm asking for is on the left side of that screen where it says home, you've got settings, you've got search, all those things on the left side, just add one more menu option and that is recommendations. When you go there, you would get served up a screen similar to what you would see on those other devices where it's pulling in content recommendations from all over your different apps uh, and displaying their, them there in one place for you to scroll through and choose something to watch. Past Me is very excited for the what to watch menu option because Past Me really called it. And this is pretty much exactly what I asked for. So instead of redoing the entire homepage, which is simple, easy to navigate, it's Roku's hallmark really, they're adding a menu option underneath the home button with the uh, what to watch. So this is their recommendation algorithm, but unlike Google TV and Fire TV and whatever else does uh, those robust recommendations, the Roku version is going to set it off to the side so that you can kind of have your cake and eat it too. I know from the comments on my videos that a lot of you would be very excited about this and a lot of you really don't want recommendations on your Roku. So either way, you get what you want. You can keep your clean home screen and never go to the what to watch menu. Or if you do like having those recommendations, then yeah, it's there for you. Either way, I like this update quite a bit, although we do have to acknowledge that this is a bit of catch up on Roku's part. Everybody else is doing recommendations. Roku has kind of been behind uh, on this for a while. And so I'm glad that they're catching up. But yeah, it is catch up. The big question to me is how good the recommendations will be. Google TV is fabulous at, with their recommendation algorithm. I will say Fire TV is less so, at least by my lights. So will Roku be better? I guess we'll see. Update number two is Roku Photo Streams. They're actually very excited about this based on the press release that they put out. Roku Photo Streams is essentially a personalized screensaver with a catch. Now, personalized screensavers are not new. Google TV does this, uh, Fire TV does this. Essentially, you can use your mobile app or your computer to take your own photos, upload them to your Roku account, and then they show up as a personalized screensaver on your TV. The catch, or maybe the better word would be the twist here, is that these are now shareable with other Roku users. So if you have family or friends elsewhere, you can share your photo streams, uh, kind of mix and mingle those, so that you can view other people's photos alongside your own in your screensaver. I think it's kind of a cool idea. There's a reason it's number two. We'll see how well it works out and how many people actually take advantage of it. But yeah, I like the idea. I like the idea of something that is already established on other platforms and giving it that twist uh, to make it a little more interesting and possibly a little more attractive to those who are in the Roku ecosystem with those they love across the country. Update number three is the voice enabled keyboard. This is another bit of catch up on Roku's part. Other platforms have been doing this for a while now. Apple TV has been doing it for years. And in fact, it was one of the things years ago that I loved about Apple TV that set them apart from other streaming platforms. What this means, the voice enabled keyboard means that when you need to enter an email address, a password, a pin, whatever, you can hold that microphone button on your remote and it will allow you to dictate that email address or password or pin. And it won't just be available to English speakers, it will support Spanish, German, and Portuguese in the US and supported countries as well. I put this pretty high at number three because even though I don't have to enter a lot of email addresses and passwords anymore, I mean, my Roku is pretty well set up, but I know what a pain in the rear end it can be when you have to set up all these new accounts, you're logging into every account that you have, 
it gets tedious to have to type something in with the remote. You could go to the app and kind of do this, uh, you know, with your phone uh, or, you know, with your phone keyboard or your voice. But now you have the option to not have to do that. You can do it right on your TV, which I think is a, it's a nice step forward. Update number four is an expansion of the live TV zone that already exists on your Roku device. The live TV zone came into effect a few months ago. Uh, and for those who appreciate live TV, it's great. It pulls in a lot of your live content into one place on your Roku device. And now they're expanding that with a recently watched tab in the live TV zone. And they're also expanding their recommendations game there as well. So local stuff, national stuff, sports news, whatever. They're going to analyze what you're watching and use that to recommend more live TV content. So if you are somebody who enjoys live TV still, then this is great for you. For me, I'm a little bit less excited about it just because I don't really watch a lot of live TV anymore, but still, I see the utility in it and I think a lot of you will be really excited about it. Number five is some new sound modes in Roku OS 11. Right now, if you click on your star key and you go to the sound modes, you've got normal, you've got bass boost, bass reduce, and bass off, I think it's called. And that's about it. Some very, very basic EQ that you can do with those presets. Now we're getting a few more. We'll have standard, dialogue, movie, music, and night mode. And again, these are just EQ presets, but these will be a little more specifically tailored to certain situations, which could be nice. Now, how night mode differs as a sound mode versus a volume mode where it already exists, I'm not sure. Night mode right now exists as a sound leveling mode so that if you're watching something at night, and you don't wanna wake up the rest of the house when a gunfight starts after a conversation, you know, those things will be a little bit closer together uh, in volume level. So will it be different as a sound mode versus a volume mode? I, I, I don't know, I guess we'll have to see, but I suspect they're the same. Number six is automatic speech clarity. Now this is another sound mode that you'll be able to toggle on and off, and I struggled whether I was more or less excited about this versus the new sound modes, we'll call it a tie. But what Roku says is that automatic speech clarity is a mode that you can toggle on and off that will dynamically identify and amplify dialogue within your content. It's a cool idea and I hope it works. It reminds me a little bit of motion smoothing, that setting that you can do on the video side of things. A lot of people love it, a lot of people really hate it. Sometimes it's useful, sometimes it really doesn't work out too well and it makes things kind of janky as you're watching it. I wonder what will happen with automatic speech clarity if it works well, I could see it being a real boon, but if it doesn't, I could see it being very distracting or distorting audio within your content. We'll see how it goes. I hope it works out well. Number seven is an update that provides more details in your mobile content searching. Essentially, they want a more visual experience when you're searching on the Roku app, the mobile app. So there won't be much in the way of new capabilities on the mobile app, but hopefully the search process, uh, the experience of using the app will be a little more pleasant and a little more informative. So when you search on the mobile app for a title, it'll give you a little more information on who's in the cast and crew, if that matters to you, but it will also do what already happens when you search on your Roku device or your Roku TV. The search results will more readily highlight where you can watch things, where you can watch them for free, where you can watch them if you have some existing subscriptions and uh, where you can pay for content if you have to. Lastly, we have number eight, which is an improved AV sync. I'm putting this one last, not because it's not important, just because I don't think that it will affect as many people as the other things on the list will. But if it does affect you, this is gonna be very important. Essentially, AV sync is about when your audio and video is out of sync, right? So if you have a sound system, uh, that isn't working properly with your Roku device, then you get that little lag time in between the visual and the audio. Very, very annoying. So the new version of AV Sync is still a settings menu in the mobile app. Uh, if you have a device that you're having trouble calibrating, hopefully the new Roku OS 11 will help you do that a little bit easier. Calibrate those devices so you don't have the annoying uh, sync issues. All right, that's my order of excitement, but I'd like to know yours. So hit the comments and let me know. With the exception of the what to watch menu option, which I love, at least in theory, I hope it works. Overall, I think a lot of these things are catch up. You know, they're trying to catch up to Roku TV, to Fire TV, to Apple TV, to what these other devices are capable of doing that Roku's been a little bit behind on for a few years. 
So it's not a radical change to the Roku ecosystem, which I think is good. They've got something that's working. Like I said about the what to watch menu, some of you won't be so excited about recommendations. Well, you don't have to use them, but I like that they're implementing it. And I like that they are catching up in some of these other areas as well. But yeah, Roku works really well already. So they didn't need to radically overhaul their entire operating system. They just need to iterate and keep improving, which this does. I think it's a step in the right direction. Uh, but I'm sure we'll have more that we wish for from Roku OS 12. So if there is anything left that you want Roku to implement, hit the comments. Let me know. I'd be interested to hear about it. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And don't forget to join me on Fridays at 2 p.m. Eastern for those live streams. Hope to see you there. Have a good one.